Hi guys and welcome back to the Milk Round. This is episode 47 that we're bringing to you on our YouTube channel, which you're on just now. So if you can like the video, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications and share our videos far and wide on your social media. Uh, this will help us out a lot. It means more people are getting to see it, more people are getting to hear what's going on in Cast Milk, in the complex and in the wider community. Um, if you're looking for our social medias, you can find us at it's uh, Kelly Youth Complex staff for Facebook, Youth Complex CYC for Twitter. We have Instagram and TikTok, and they're both youth under slash complex. And I remembered that without looking Yay! at it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I was watching you that full time and I seen you and like, I was like he's not looking down he's not looking down he's doing he's doing he's doing it yes. <laughs> so as we say this is episode 47 so last week you guys were on and it was like life for the youthy and I thought it was a brilliant episode um, because I wasn't on it so <laughs> <laughs> so it was better with it me um, oh, no, but it was I a great see. episode so go and check that out if you've not seen it you get to see some of the changes that have been made to the youth complex um, for this summer and what we've got planned for this summer so check that out if you've known before and all our other episodes um, but he's gave wee tours as well and we've got that on our YouTube so um, we've got the large group workroom video we've got the drop in video kind of separate as well um, and keep your eyes out on social media as well because we'll be talking about um, our drop in that is opening back up this summer guys so uh, yes. can't wait Woo. to have the young people in so Chris when, when are we open? So we'll be open Wednesday and uh, Wednesday to Friday nights, um, and you can book us. We're look, still looking for you to book a space in advance. Um, just get us on on all the kind of social medias and stuff like that. Um, and we'll be going from so the week after he's finished school. Mm -hmm. So off the top, I'm looking at the calendar now because that's something that I do need to look at. So the week after that, so it'll be from. Wednesday the 30th of yeah, June sounds on, and so from then on in that will be our summer program so not only will we be welcoming all our high school members back some old and new faces we'll also be throwing open access to the primary seven group that are due to go into S1 Woo! so they should all they would have all had some sort of letter email or text um last week just to kind of give them all the details and stuff like that and um i've been working really hard trying to get all the things set up the kind of fun things set up for the drop-in so we now have about i think we've got five or six games for the ps5 Ooh, and we enough. have three games for the nintendo switch which I'm buzzing nintendo for the switch, switch man. Area. Buzzing. so so that's just a few things that are that are there to kind of look forward to aye, and you get to see us as well aye, aye. Aye. The main part. so if you are going into first year and you're a bit unsure maybe you don't know if you're maybe you're going into a high school and you've got to cast my high or St Margaret Mary's maybe people for your primary school aren't going here's a wee message we'll meet you like on the drive on the way up um, and walk you in so because sometimes it's a wee bit nerve wracking um, and you can hang about with us and then meet new pals that you're going to be going to school with Hi, excellent, excellent. We've also got our music group is still going to run through the summer. Yep. So if you're already involved in that, keep your eyes out for um, messages on social media. I'm sure Chris will keep you up to date in the group chat. And so I, uh, I, the music group, just just to kind of be clear in the music group. So um, it's it's more like a music. I think I mentioned this before. It's a music performance group. So it's good if you've already got an established skill in music. We're, Probably when people hear music group, they think, oh, that means I can go and get a, a musical lessons and an instrument. Mm -hmm. It probably isn't that type of group. Certainly if you were to come in in one of our drop-in sessions and I was there and you wanted me to do something like that with you, then we could do that. But for this group, is if you've got an established like skill in music, and that can be just singing as well, that's absolutely fine. But uh, if you play an instrument, all the better, you know? Right. Brilliant. And uh, Job Club will still be running through the summer as well, Kirsty. Yep. So it's going to be running on a Wednesday and it's going to be mainly during the day, but I'm available at night as well. I just thought more people will be kind of getting out of your bed a wee bit. So it'll be like lunchtime-ish time. Um, but if you're wanting a wee appointment, just hit me up in a message um, and we'll sort something. And if you're 
to visit to come in. We can even do it via Zoom eh, or Teams or anything like that, or we can just um, kind of chat back and forward via email. Right. Excellent. So that is what our summer's looking like. So keep an eye out on your social media. So we are putting this up on the Thursday that school's closed. So it's officially the summer holidays. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Me and Kirsty are delighted. Uh, yes! uh, we get a wee bit of more time away from the school and off work and things like that. But uh, Chris, you're a wee bit less less happy than us. It's the, it's the time when when the, it's over to you, parents. The summer of childcare, as I like to call it. Um, so, but I, I, as I was saying before we even started recording, I feel sorry for teachers who've got kids because they stop, but then it's like, oh no. It's relentless, so <laughs> so no, no. Aye, aye. Well, I've that's been really. Aye, well, it's the summer holidays, and we're hoping you guys are going to join as much as possible. But also, just before the summer holidays, uh, which has just started the day, then you guys would have got results. A lot of you would have got exam results for your hard work over fourth, fifth, and sixth year. Um, and what we like to do every year when the exam results come out is take part in the no wrong path hashtag. No wrong path, um, kind of pro project that kind of runs, and um, we like to tell young people that there is no wrong path in life. Um, whatever happens at high school isn't the be all and end all. And we've got a whole episode on that, Kirsty, and we had your pal on as well to talk yes. about it. Mm -hmm. um, so do you want to just tell tell the young people and the listeners uh, what no wrong path actually is? Yeah, so basically, when you're at school and you've got all this pressure to do at your exams and kind of achieve the best that you can I that is that is great but see if you don't and you don't get do as well as you thought you were going to do or maybe you don't get into the course that you want to do or something like that doesn't mean that you're never ever going to be able to do that as a career there's there's times when you maybe just go on a different route and basically that is it's no wrong path so there's some people where they don't go the direct route straight to university and then into the career that they always dream of um sometimes you just go run like run the houses a wee bit and that's fine so we've got pictures of ourselves in it and our, our paths and uh, in uh, the jobs that we do today and when I left school the the type of job that I do now wasn't a thing like youth workers in school wasn't a thing when I was at school um also when I was at college, I was studying a course and I was like, oh, I might go to uni to do this, I don't know, maybe. Got all excited about going to uni to go and do the course that I'm doing at college and it got cancelled. Like, the funding just got pulled and it was no longer a course. And I was like, oh, well, that's me, I'm never going to go to uni. And then I took a year out and I was getting to know people and just finding out what I was interested in. And I'm so glad to this day that that course got cancelled mm -hmm. because it gave me a different lease of life and I went a different pathway and I going to change it for the world. Mm -hmm. So don't be stressed if you don't get the grade that you wanted or you didn't pass the course that you did or anything like that, you didn't get into the course or you're a wee bit worried, give me a message, we'll figure it out together mm -hmm. and I can assure you, you're not the only person feeling like that right now. Yeah. So we've put a wee TikTok video of some of the people with different pathways, lots of them with Casamilk as well. Pause on them, read them, see see all these inspirational people telling you, like, hey, it wasn't just a straight route into it. People kind of go different ways. Um, it was dead, aye. Like, and, and what you guys have done this year is done it through the hardest year ever, probably. Yes, so you have missed four months aye. of school at one point. Mm -hmm. um, you've not been getting the same learning experiences years above years. Um, so don't worry about things. Things will fall into place. You've got plenty of time. Like myself, I, I went to university from high school uh, and done a degree in sport. And then can you get a job in sport? Because at that point, uh, Scotland had toasted the Commonwealth Games. A lot of people were getting really interested in it. There was apprenticeships in sport and things like that. So it was hard to find employment in sport. I fell into youth, youth work, so I did. But youth work, my youth work involved a lot of sport and I used my skills for what I'd learned. And then hopefully in the next few years, I'll be going back to university. So even in, late into my 20s, I'm hoping to go back and uh, get more education. So there's no time to be doing things don't let society tell you that oh you need to be at university straight after uh, 
high school you need to be in further education straight after high school now take your time figure out what's best for you and go and achieve what you can achieve Um, and because as long as you do your best as well like a lot of people will be hurt by what they've got in their exams and things like that but like I say it's a really hard year you've all done so well so there's plenty of time don't worry about it too much and I was listening to the radio and they were saying that the like SQA is going to be changing and Education Scotland and things like that so like the way that we see exams and things like that might not be the same and when we when I was at school I did standard grades Mm -hmm. it was not national fives and whatever like that and it's always changing and it's like it's revised it's almost like they're looking at it to make it better and better for young people so actually I think Covid has made everybody look at the exam system and being like maybe maybe we need to do it a wee bit differently mm-hmm. so Aye. silver lining and all <laughs> Aye. so check out our social medias for those no wrong paths and you might see one that's went viral as well and went worldwide yes. with one of your guests for the milk round um <laughs> Well, as you can see as well behind myself and Kirsty, we've got a couple of flags up and that might be to celebrate something that happened on Friday there. So, Scotland got their first point at a major tournament since 19... Did we draw in 1998, Chris? I don't even know. Yep, we got a a draw against Denmark. Right, okay. So, our first point in 23 years at a major tournament. So, we, we played the old enemy on Friday night and ended up nothing each, but for us... That is a great achievement because we are ranked 44th in the world and I think they're ranked in the top 10. So um, going to Wembley, where they're supposed to be one of the favourites for the tournament, taking the point off from no conceding either um, and giving ourselves a good chance for tomorrow night. So hopefully when you're watching this on Thursday, Scotland will be through. Chris, what do you fancy? What do you, what do you think our chances are like? I... Um... I, I was I was like after the after the Scotland England game. So th- that night when the one each draw came in from the Czech Republic Croatia, yeah. I had a feeling at that point, and then that feeling turned into almost belief when Stones hit off the bar that rocket Aye. header off the bar, and I thought there's something about this. Now today we've found out that Billy Gilmore has tested positive for COVID. Man of the match yep. against against England. So I don't know. Is is this an omen? Mm-hmm. Is this an omen of things to come? Mm-hmm. Could I mean? It's almost like we we've got a talent for spectacular, dramatic endings that ultimately mm-hmm. end in failure. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to think like that because yep. I think that the team must have got a right boost. Mm-hmm. from that and I definitely got a boost from it so but I would hate would you know what I would really hate if it was like a draw or something because mm-hmm. effectively both teams have kind of cancelled each other out yeah yeah in some ways because no team wins that this game coming up tomorrow is must win so each team it's like going to be like a cup final mm-hmm. so it's must win could this be our time could this yes. be a group of players that <laughs> shake this voodoo hoodoo off of themselves? <laughs> Could it be? I believe. I believe it's happening. I believe. <laughs> I believe. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think Camden will be bouncing tomorrow. I think it'll be an amazing amazing atmosphere. What I've loved about the, the two games, um, I wasn't on the podcast last week after, well, we had not we had played that day that you guys recorded. And uh, what I loved about the two games is I've never seen a lineup of 11 players singing the Scottish National Anthem at football. I've never seen it since mm. watching Scotland games since I was five years old or whatever. And this team are all singing the national anthem. And I don't know why, but it just makes me so proud. There's a, yes. there's a guy who was born in England there. There's an Australian in our team, and they're both singing this with so much pride because they're representing our wee country. Yeah. Um, but hopefully tomorrow, if they can go out there, I'll get the three points and get through. I've, we've still got to hope that other results go, go our way in, in different um, groups as well. But I think a result that's just happened just there, Chris, is one of the results that we need. Um, I think... Austria beating Ukraine might have helped us out. Am I right in yeah. saying that? I'm not yeah. sure. I've not like um, studied it on that level, so I've not mm-hmm. seen the thing. But I'm assuming uh, 
maybe Ukraine had it would have had a superior goal difference or something like that. Right, aye, it might have been something like that. But I think we needed I'm not sure that would we be. needed one of those teams to win against the other, I think. Yeah. Um so it meant like our points, if we get the three points, are going to be enough to see us through. Um so let's hope when you're watching this on Thursday, Scotland are finally through to a knockouts in a major tournament. Um, <laughs> so that brings us on to what's my telly, because I'm sure we were all watching that on Friday night. We were all glued to the telly. But um, if I don't know if that's what you what's, you are going to speak about what's been on your telly, but um, we'll start with you, Kirsty. What's, what's been on your telly? Okay, so definitely was watching the football, was getting all patriotic with my flag that I can wear. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we've not got it on. Oh, save that for when we win. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's been on my telly is there's uh, this programme called Insatiable uh, on Netflix. Um, and it's about this girl who was like getting bullied and stuff like that. And then um, she kind of gets involved in like an accident and then she kind of reinvents herself a wee bit. And there's this guy who used to be a lawyer and get involved and then he had to do like a pro bono, so like a like a free uh, law, like free, what's it called? Panic. Representation. Um, and then, so he, he does, he represents her and then there's like this whole hoo-ha and then she goes into like a, a pageant. And how, like, she, like, so from being bullied for being ugly and fat and things like that to then becoming, like, this pageant queen and stuff like that. So it's a pure chick flick, but it's actually really good. Um, so that's been so my telly. But right. also I am buzzing that next week. Love Island stars! Woo! <laughs> I'm buzzing. <laughs> yes, I know it's pure rubbish telly, but, you know... I'm going to get my water bottle out and I'm mm -hmm. going to be watching Love Island mm -hmm. and just, like, I, I can't wait. What kills me about Love Island is, right, if you enjoy it, that's fine, go and watch it. But see my Twitter timeline? It's just Love Island meme after Love mm -hmm. Island meme. And I've not got a clue what's going on because I don't watch it. Brooke watches it and she sometimes tells me, but mm -hmm. I'm quite good at zoning out when Brooke's telling me about Love Island. I'll be quiet because she's in the next room so she can probably hear what I'm saying. <laughs> I listen, to, I listen to every single word she says about loving uh, No, but it kind of clogs up your timeline on social media. That's the only thing that kills me. And, and I'm probably that and person. Thing that. as well, back when, uh, back in the, a few years ago, there was this part of, we have a weekly team meeting and there was this part just before the team meeting started as the Love Island chat. Mm -hmm. Right, and it was just they were all talking about. It. I had I didn't have a clue what they were talking about, and I I mentioned that Game of Thrones finale coming up, guys. Hadn't <laughs> even heard of it, and I'm yeah. like, I think I'm working in the wrong team here. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Game of Thrones, possibly one of the biggest shows of the last ten years, but no, no, Love Island. You've got to do your research next time, Chris. So the next coming weeks, you'll need to be going to the telly watching it. Aye. Do you know what? Next team meeting, we need to get a fire pit and we need to be all around the fire pit chatting. If you were getting a fire pit, I would probably rather burn my eyes and ears. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> you might enjoy it, but Chris, because uh, I think there's voting out in all that in Love Island, so you could just vote Kirsty out. <laughs> Raging. Uh, he's coming along to the idea now. He's like, hi, hi, baby. What about what's in your belly this week, Kirsty? So what's been in my belly is that found this, my pal found it, and I've been absolutely obsessed. And I like, I've got a sweet tooth, and I quite like, you know, like old school sweeties. But mm -hmm. this was like a mixture of something, and I was like, oh, this is dynamite. I am brew bonbons. I've heard of them, I've never tried them. I've oh my them. God. Oh, they're amazing. Aye. They're amazing. Aye. I'm sure you can probably get them in like Drake Cafe and that, like that kind yeah, of show. Oh, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Aye. Mm -hmm. A top tier. Top tier. Do you Definitely. remember the wee bars, iron brew bars? Yes. <laughs> bars, mm -hmm. iron brew bars. Uh, but aye, they were, they were good. So they were, mm -hmm. they were decent. Are they like them? I like them. Aye. They're, they're a wee bit like that. Aye. It's like the soft 
like outside well it's not as hard outside but then when you chew into it it's it turns into like the ambry bar type thing Aye. all right okay which is quite nice let's try to get out. some for the next team meeting yeah then. try yeah. it let's try them definitely brilliant uh what about you chris what, what's been on your tele this week so what's been on my telly is i'm going i've been on this consistent marvel trip and last week I broke from it to mention the Cruella film, the new Cruella film, because that is actually genuinely good. Um, but I'm back onto Marvel again because Loki has started on mm-hmm. uh, Disney Plus. And so there's been three, pro- this is the third um, TV programme released that's kind of tying in with the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. And out of the three so far, as the first two episodes, this is by far my favourite. This is going to really rewrite and set up phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I can right. quite confidently say that. It's just, it's almost like they nullified some of the stuff that has happened previously and says, no, wait a minute. This is what you should be thinking about yeah. here. Do you know what I mean? So great stuff. Owen Wilson's in it. He's got quite a prominent role in it. Um, and you've got... Um, Mr. Higgle <laughs> in it too. <laughs> He's good, Tim. I, I like him. Tom Higgleston, I'm only kidding on. <laughs> um, so, good stuff, yeah. I'm not going to go into too much into it. Just watch it. It's, it's good. Aye. Just going back to that name there, now the actor uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Well, Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> I love when people put stuff up about his name and just name him something totally different. So, yep. and then one of them's like a road sign in Scotland that says like this way, Breakin Cowed and Beef, and it's just got a picture of him as if that's his name. <laughs> <laughs> Breakin Cowed and Beef. <laughs> uh, right, so that's what's on your telly this week. What's in your belly, Chris? What's in my belly? What well, I, I thought I was, I had something for this, and then I've just completely and utterly forgot it. So I'm just going to pull something right out there. I had some, a, a takeaway that I hadn't had in a while, and it was, and I don't know if I've mentioned it before, I'm going to mention it now, Wing Rush. And it's, um, think of think in the terms of chicken wings, right? But they do chicken wings in like 10 or 12 different flavours. Right. And mm-hmm. when people sometimes think of chicken wings, they think KFC, this ain't got a patch on KFC. You can get some good stuff and you can get them boneless. If you don't like bones, you can get boneless chicken wings, if mm-hmm. you can call them that. But basically they've deboned the wing and it's just the meat you're getting. So Hi. for all those kind of squeamish people out there. And if you're going to get it, get the Nashville hot because that's that's where it's at. Is it like, pipe, like, is it really, really spicy? No. No, I don't think it is anyway. Have you tried all 12 flavours? I'm working my way through them slowly, so I've probably tried about a good over half of them anyway. Nice, nice. But for me, it's all comes back to the Nashville hot. It's a nice. dry rub as well, where a lot of them have got sauces on them, so yeah. I like the dry rub. Right. I don't get all messy and stuff like that. Aye, aye. That's, That's half party. Fun. That's party That's eating wings. <laughs> Getting that messy, mate. <laughs> Wait, and is that on like Just Eat or Delivery or Just something? Just Eat, all of them. It's on, yeah. they're, they're quite widely available. So, right. so that's I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out, I think. Yeah. Right, so, uh, right, don't know me then. I've not done this for a couple of weeks, so I forgot what way you kind of format it there. So I just jumped <laughs> in. Oh, custody just used to start. But uh, what's on my tele? So yesterday I went to the cinema. It was my birthday weekend. So I went to the cinema yesterday. My dad got me free tickets for it. I don't know how he got them, but um, nice. we looked up what was on. And it was like uh, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. I've not seen the first one. It was, um, there's another sequel out. Uh, I can't even remember what it is, but I've not seen the first one of that either. Or oh, mm. A Quiet Place. I think A Quiet Place 2 is out. I've not, seen a, I've not seen the first one of that. So we're looking through the films and there was nothing for it. Peter Rabbit 2. No, <laughs> not, not interested. It's another sequel <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like the third Conjuring is out as well. And Brooke's not seen the first two of that. So we were stuck between In the Heights and The Father. Um, Did you see In the Heights? No, we're not big musical fans. So we went to see The Father yesterday. Um, and that's the one that Anthony Hopkins won his Academy Award for. He won an Oscar for 
for best actor um, in the father, and it's pretty good. Um, it was no something I would choose to go like. That sounds daft because I did choose to go and watch it, but it's not something. See if it was on Netflix. Me and Brooke when they sit down and watch it because mm-hmm. it's like a drama, and we didn't think there would be much to it. But aye, it was really good. It was uh, thought provoking, I would say. Who's in uh, it? Anthony Hopkins, Olivia Coleman, um, and then like three other actors. There's not many people in it, um, mm-hmm. and it's mostly based in in the one flat as well. It's based on a play, so I think they take a lot oh, of the, right, okay, yeah, yeah, parts of the play in it. Um, but it's good. I check it out if you get the chance to go and see it. A ten. Uh, you know, see because it surprised me. I'm uh-huh. going to get an eight. Ooh. Aye, aye, and it made me understand a lot of things, and it's a tearjerker as well. And aye, it was oh, good. Are you bubbling? I, I wasn't. No, I'm. You hard. are. You are. You liar. I'm hard as nails. I don't cry. Boys don't cry. <laughs> hard as nails, like yeah. Hard as the chicken wings. I was. I was. <laughs> I was close to, I was close to crying. Uh, there is a bit that gets you, man, and you're just like, going to stop doing what you're doing. But I won't spoil it. So I, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, check it out, The Father. Uh, and then what's in my belly this week is I came home for work. I was in, in a wee, wee bit late up at the school today, and I came home, and um, Brooke's mum was on the phone, and I just heard her saying, and salt and chilli chips, please. And I was like, yes, that is the best. <laughs> Sound to hear when you first walk in the door. Somebody yes. ordered a Chinese, mm. so we got an ocean walk tonight. So I've just, nice. I've got some left to go and get another flight yet. So I'll be mm-hmm. having that when uh, after. You. So that's what's what's in my belly this week, hi. Um, so if you want to tell us what's in your telly and what's in your belly, then leave it in the comment section below or on our social medias, uh, and we'll maybe give you a wee shout out. Because um, I was going to leave mine in the comment section last week, and then it wasn't yeah. it was disabled or something. The comment What's section. That? Aye, it was turned off. But so YouTube just letting us down. They're trying to take... We are making millions off the milk round. That's what it know, is. Us three, mm-hmm. and they're just getting jealous. Because we're milking it, man. Milking it in. We've been, able, we've been able to, like, like afford two entire Scotland flags. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting on the third, but, like... <laughs> Like and comment on our video, and we might be able to afford the third one. If you would like to donate a Scotland flag <laughs> to the cause, just wait till the result on on Tuesday. Aye, <laughs> we might not want it. <laughs> right, so uh, now we come to the quiz, and I've got a quiz for you two guys. Oh, loved the challenge last week, by the way. Good effort from both of you. Oh, Chris, that was solid, wasn't it? Well, it was a bit hard, to be fair. Thank you, Lee. I thought so as well. But <laughs> Mr. Grumpy Nichols there, there thought it was fair. I played football for years, right? I played it since I was like six, something till like. Since you were a boy. Aye. On the first team. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> eh. <laughs> but I think I would, I would get like one or two. Aye. A tennis ball's hard, it is, man. You don't know what way it's going to go. No, and you're being filmed as well, so you're like, oh, the pressure's on. Uh-huh. And you can drop in like the wee space you said because the tables were there. It's a tighter space. You've got to keep it compact. So you do. So you've not got a chance like in a large group workroom. If you hit a bad shot, you can chase after it. But no. it was a good effort. Two each was was a good effort. So well done. Why don't we summer drop in? Let's have a challenge with us three against three young people. Aye, sounds good. Yes. Aye. Youth game. The us <laughs> or the viewers. Mm-hmm. Aye, views. <laughs> right, okay. Right, so I've got a quiz for you here, and it's uh, a pen and paper one. So whoever gets closest gets the point. All right. Yeah. So it is the Euros right now. Two games have just finished before we recorded this, so we're including those in all of the questions because I've got the stats up to date. Okay. I need to check the scores then. Oh no, I think that's cheating, Chris. Yeah, okay then. Oh. I did kind of give you a hint earlier. Eh? what happened in one of the games. Um, so, how many matches have been played so far at the Euro 2020 tournament? Some maths going on in Chrissy's head there. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, show your answers. But 20 yeah. and 30. And the point goes to Kirsty. It's 28 games so far. Yes! <laughs> yes! So it's 1 0, 1 0 to Kirsty. Okay. In those 28 games, how many goals have been scored? 
Oh Jesus! Goals which have been counted, no goals that have been like done. Oh, well, they haven't been counted. They weren't allowed. Did Aye. you watch that the other day? What was it? The the man that they disallowed the, the goal, and then he went half and a half. Um, can't remember the game. Anyway, no, never mind. Let's go. <laughs> uh, how many goals? Let's. Got an answer? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see your answers. 56 and 81. Kirsty's got it again. It's <laughs> 64 goals. <laughs> been scored so far. Okay. Uh, so, Netherlands are the top scorers of the tournament so far. How many goals have they scored out of those 64? Okay. Okay. Okay, let's see. 15 and 8. And we've got a perfect score. Eight is correct, Chris. They've oh. scored eight goals. So they won 3-2 in their first game. They won 3-0 today. So they must have put two goals by someone. <laughs> Can't remember who it was, though. Uh, they beat Austria 2-0, maybe? Aye, something like that. Let's go for that. Uh, so there's been a lot of goals, but there's also been some goalless draws. How many goalless draws have there been in the tournament? Oh. How many games was there? Uh, there's been 28 games played. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Let's see. Six goalless draws and four goalless draws. So Chris equalises, makes it two each because there's only been oh. two. So, Scotland game and some. Who was the other one? Was it Spain or something like that? Spain is correct. Yep, Spain yeah. drew with Sweden in the first game, nothing each. Spain absolutely battered them that game, um, and they have the highest average average possession in the tournament. What is their average possession? Their average over all the games. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. What is our percentage of possession over all the games? An average of it. What? So I think they've played two out of the three group matches. I don't even... Oh, wait a minute then. No, what? Like, so, even... so, Kirsty, if a game is so evenly matched, right? So, mm -hmm. say I've got the, the ball for the whole first match and you've got the ball for the whole second match, we'd mm -hmm. have 50-50% possession. I'd have 50%, you'd have 50%. Right. Say I had it a wee bit more in your half, mm -hmm. I'd maybe have 60% possession, you'd have 40 and they've had two games? Spain have had two games, but it's just an average of the two games. Um, okay. And they're the best in the tournament at keeping the ball, so. So we're going for a percentage? Yep. Right, okay. What are we going for? Okay. 65 and 68. Very close, but Chris takes it. He takes the lead 3 2. What a comeback! It's 72% possession. 75% percent against Sweden. Yep, aye, they battered them, so they did. Well, 85, in fact. 85. Is it? Aye, because Sweden had 50% possession. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, what was, the, what was the answer, Lee? Sorry, uh, 72% overall. Aye. Okay, next one is, who are the best passers in the tournament? So Germany are the best passers in the tournament with a very high accuracy um, of passes. So what is their average passing accuracy percentage in this tournament? So, Kirsty, if I, if I was in a team and we all passed each other really well mm -hmm. and none of us lost the ball or none of it was intercepted, we'd have 100% passing accuracy. Right, okay. But if I 
played six passes and only three of them got to one of my teammates, I'd have 50% pass accuracy. Right, okay. Right. And right. Germany's the highest? Germany are the highest, aye. Right. They're good at finding their teammates. Also, their manager does enjoy, is very accurate at smelling his fingers. Aye, he likes a wee sniff <laughs> here and there. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what he's been touching before the game, but I, I don't want to know either. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, my <I>, man. <laughs> right, let's see what we've got, Kirsty. 60% and 80% for Chris. And Chris, you've, you've went one ahead again, so it's 4-2. Well, you're two ahead, so um, the, percent, the passing accuracy is 90%. Wow. Really? Nah, they're really that good. So they're, that a lot of that will come from playing along the back line, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So, aye, they'll get their stats up for doing things like that. Um, okay, Italy have had the most attempts at goal in this tournament. Um, they've also scored quite a few goals. Um, and they've played all three of their matches. But how many attempts at goal have they had over the three matches? Does that mean on target? Um, it's got attempts, so I don't think it's on target. On or off target. Right? Aye, it could have went wide, it could have went over the bar. Aye. So the and that doesn't count the ones that they actually scored? It does count. Aye. It does count the ones they actually scored? Right, okay. Um, Chris, you want to start? Three games, you said? Three games. Okay. No. Hmm. I'm going to go with my first gut reaction in this one because I changed it and I've changed it back to my original. Okay. 15 shots on target of shots and 43 shots. So, uh, Kirsty, you think they've had five shots a game? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> they've had 60 attempts at goal so far this tournament. So, Chris goes five to a head. If I said 43 and I was there, I thought... I went and then I went up to 54 and I went, no, nah, maybe just 43, but aye. 60. 60 attempts. Aye. The thing is, do you know who do you know who's got a outright bet on the Italians to win the whole thing? Your man. Your man. You have a big Italy flag next week. Before, <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> that, I get the, no so you with the pizza crust, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we think we're quite a hard nation, but Switzerland seem even harder because they're the highest tackles in the tournament so far. How many tackles have they made? How many games have they played so far? They've played their three. They've played their three games, right, okay. I am just Guessing. Okay. Random stuff. Okay. 93 and 45. One of these have got it bang on. It's Kirsty. Well done. Wow. Well Five done. Three. 45 tackles. What? The Swiss are hard as nails, so they'll go through anything. Okay. Next question. Turkey. I've had to defend a lot. And their keeper's been the hardest working keeper in the tournament so far. How many saves? Has he had to make? Oh. He'll not be making any more because they're out, but <laughs> that's how many he's made so far. Have they played two games or three games? They played the three. They played the right. three games as well, right? Okay, there we go. 56 and 14. Chris gets it. His uh, 18 saves has been made by the Turkish keeper. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like guessing random numbers now. <laughs> Italy have the most clean sheets with three, but how many other teams have two clean sheets? Many teams are in it. 24. Oh, 
five teams, seven teams. And Chris, you're the closest. It's three teams have two clean sheets. England uh, are one of them. England are one of them. Mm. You name the other two. Italy and then... Italy are on three, aye, but there's two others with two clean sheets. Sweden? Sweden is correct, aye. And if you get this third one, you've won the quiz, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the pressure's Even on. Even the <laughs> Not France because they drew one each. Uh, is it quite a small team? Or is uh, it... No, no. No, no. That's, that's not even no, a... they're, not, they're not a small team. They'd have been seen as uh -huh. not one of the favourites, but they've got a chance. Uh -huh. um... Like, no, nah, I can't think. Nah. Or something? It's not it's, Germany. It's the Netherlands. The Netherlands, of course, yeah. they, uh, they won 3 2 in the first game, 1 2 0, and then they won 3 0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the last question. Chris has already won, but um, Gina Wijnaldum starred in the Dutch's victory tonight and he got a couple of goals. So he is joint top scorer right now on three goals. How many players are on three goals in the tournament, including Gina Wijnaldum? Many other players. So including Wayne Al Wayne Aldum, so he's one. Okay. So he's included as, as as in this number. Yep. Okay, cool. Right, no worries. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Four and eight. And it's three, so Chris really wins it. So well done. So Ronaldo's three. Uh -oh. only Lukaku. Lukaku's only got two just now. Has got definitely got three. The Czech Republic. There guy. we go. That's the other. Aye, yeah. Sheik. Aye, he's doing well. Well done, Chris. You know your Euros. You've been watching it, obviously. Uh, you yeah. said when we were first speaking about the Euros that you're really interested in the big events. So yeah. aye, well done. A worthy winner, Kirsty. What do you think? Aye, aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> no, well done. <laughs> so uh, that is our episode for this week, episode 47. We won't be on next week, um, but keep your eyes peeled because there'll be something new coming onto our YouTube. We might be changing up the format of things, um, so keep your eyes peeled for what is coming for the milk round. But for now, if you can like our videos, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, and share the videos far and wide on, us, on your social medias. You can get us on social medias as well, and we are on there at... Kelly Youth Complex staff at Facebook. On Twitter, it's Youth Complex CYC. We have a TikTok and an Instagram, and they're both youth under slash complex. Oh, Woo! too easy, too easy. Wins a quiz and throws out all the social medias as if I'm nothing. Uh, <laughs> so I, we won't see you next week, but keep your eyes peeled. Obviously, ring that bell, and you'll be the first one to see what's next on the YouTube channel. Thanks very much for watching Season 4, guys. We've really appreciated everybody that's watched, uh, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.